Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Film Snobbery Live. I am your host, Nick Baisley, and I am joined, as usual, by my co-host, Mr. Jerry Cavallaro. Hey, Jerry, say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. Hi, hey, Nick. How are you? I am phenomenal, sir. We have uh, such a huge show today, tons of stuff to be, uh, you know, just we're packing it in there. Like we're yeah, making... Yeah, shut up. It's like we're making film sausages. Um, <laughs> we're just jamming stuff in there. Well, but, to a good start already. <laughs> It's like every show we do. Um, we actually know. We have a really big show. Uh, we have a huge announcement that we're going to make at the end of the show, so be sure to stick around. And we have some wonderful guests. We're going to start right off the top here. We're going to get everything uh, rolling right away. Uh, our first two guests are part of the Independent uh, Collective. Their new movie they're working on, raising funds for, and they're currently filming, uh, Tiny Dancer. You've seen him before as uh, actor and screenwriter of uh, uh, Cake Eaters, and uh, you've seen her before as well as a uh, director makeup artist. She's all over the place. Um, they're a husband and wife team. I love having them both on. Please welcome Jason Tiffany Bartok. Hi! Hey, Nick. What's up, man? <laughs> hey, guys. How you doing? We're doing great. Good, Thanks so much for having us. I like the desk. Thank you very much. The, the virtual desk. Love it. If it's only fun. you could see how horrible it actually is when it's not green screened. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want to thank you guys for, for being on. Hopefully we introduce you guys somewhat properly. Our pleasure, absolutely. Um, anyone who does want to read a little bit more about the guests that we have on right now in the chat room, um, we actually do have a couple bios up right there on filmsnobberylive.com. As well, I want to encourage everybody, if they do have any get, uh, questions for our guests throughout the interview, uh, please feel free to throw them up in the chat room. Jerry's going to be moderating that and, and uh, kind of watching the conversation there, and he'll be throwing all the questions back over at me. That being said, I think it's time we, get, we kind of roll right into it. Guys, what have you been up to? Uh, thus far, I mean, um, you know, tell us a little bit, uh, you know, about what your current stuff is. Oh, a little background is, um, you know, we made a film, Altered by Elvis, as Vinyl Foot Productions, and then um, Jace, at the same time, his script got made, um, The Cake Eaters, into um, a film directed by Mary Stuart Masterson and starring Kristen Stewart, and then since then, we've been trying to get um, our other projects off the ground, like, um, we have two scripts in development, Tiny Dancer and Red River, and um, Tiny Dancer, we've been crowdfunding, and we've been experimenting with different, like, out-of-the-box um, fundraising methods for it, and we just did a successful Indiegogo campaign for it, and we, um, we filmed, and we originated this thing called the Independent Collective, and so that's where we are. Yeah, yeah, we, um, we basically had done a reading of the script, uh, like, two years ago with uh, Daphne Rubin Vega, who's this amazing actress that was in Jacko's Boating, Philip Seymour Hoffman's film, she was up for a Spirit nomination, last uh, Spirit Awards, and we decided, like, the film had gone, you know, with a couple different directors, and we were always trying to attach a big movie star, and then we decided, you know, let's just make it ourselves. It, you know, it takes place in New York, we could make it for under 200000 we have a cast that wants to do it, and we, we had raised, like, $10,000 last year, and we took that money and shot like 20 minutes of the film as like, you know, to cut together like a long trailer to show people like we could do it. And we really did it. Like we, we had a full crew and, you know, it looks like a movie movie. And, you know, uh, since then we've, you know, we've raised another 25 and we need about, you know, 75,000 more to go. So can I make virtual money with that? <laughs> Can I make like like just be like yes I'll pay you in virtual money like your like your desk like my like my desk or like you know in Second Life where you can you know make virtual money in Second Life which is about as worthless as the other stuff in there. Fantasy Hollywood. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's like the Hollywood Stock Exchange, which I played yeah. for literally years, and yeah. I have never made any significant growth. <laughs> Um, now let me ask you guys a question. You guys have mentioned that obviously you did the Indiegogo campaign and you've experimented with other uh, crowdfunding or fundraising, um, you know, kind of things. Now, what ha so far has been the most successful? Um, do you feel that you know, in terms of whether it's uh, actual capital or um, even awareness? Indiegogo was definitely the most successful. Yeah, yeah, we did a big, a big fancy big fancy party for the film and we had like Mikhail Baryshnikov and stars and wealthy people in the room and film producers and Nick we raised like a thousand dollars that night. Wow. It was, it was horrible. And, and we, we went home, we had like a suit and a dress on, not at the same time, and we were like, what happened? People liked our 20 minutes, 
you know, there was like 120 amazing people in New York City in the fall, and then we like got down to business and spent like 60 days on the Indiegogo campaign, and we raised 10 and another 10 to our fiscal sponsor, because Tiny Dancer is, a, is sponsored by NIFA, so it's actually a 501c3. Oh, great, great. Now, and now as far as, you know, with all these um, uh, wealthy and influential people that you have at a party like this, you know, what is kind of the follow-up on something you would do like that, you know, to figure out maybe why they weren't as inclined to... Uh Oh, it was it horrible, was, Nick. It was I, horrible. Was, I did like research. Yeah. I was asking people who were there. Yeah, I was yeah. so the thing that I learned was that um, nobody came expecting. Everybody came expecting the next the person over to give. Like huh. you know, oh oh well, they know what they're doing. Oh, they're wonderful. Oh, this is wonderful. Someone will give. You know. And so I, I, I got that. So we needed to be much more aggressive asking in the room. Like somebody yeah. needed to be in charge with the clipboard and the thing and, like, the, and yeah. the swipey and the everything, you know, right Absolutely. there. And then, But then we heard from a lot of people that now that we have that database, like a lot of them were looking for to invest. They, mm -hmm. they saw donating as a waste. Yeah. So if we had a dinner with these same people and had paperwork asking for investments that they very well likely would would be interested in investing, which we're looking which, into. Right. Which really to me seems like almost a, a poor um, a poor business decision because most of these uh, wealthier people, um, you know, use donations as a ta you know as a tax write off for a lot of these things versus an investment which especially an independent film is you know unless you really have that that breakout hit like um, you know like the cake eaters or something like that um, so the good news is at least you guys have a track record um, you know the 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 thing of that is that you know you you, you there's a, a significant amount of risk yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's really, it's funny, you, you can't convince them of that. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I had meetings with, uh, like, three meetings with, with investors that came out of that uh, that amazing night, and it was really discouraging, like, they all were like, you made a film for $2 million, and now you want to make one for under 200 and to me that seems like such a huge step backwards, and, and I, I, you know, I wouldn't put, I don't put, like, $200,000 in a movie, I put... Five million. You know these these hilarious conversations. Everybody's got a fancier excuse. Yeah, and yep. and then like the traditional producers that are friends of ours that came, you know they were like the film is too small and experimental for us. Mm -hmm. But you know we wish you the best of luck. Like it, you know it was it was it was uh, yeah it was frustrating. Mm -hmm. You know? And, you know, Jerry actually has an... I'm going to let Jerry talk for a second, and I know it's very shocking. We don't normally do this during <laughs> interviews, but Jerry actually has a very similar uh, experience in dealing with producers where he would go out and try to talk to these producers, and it, they would never. he would never get close to the number that they would... You know, there was always something. So, Jerry, tell him about, like, you know, um, you know, you want to make a movie for, like, 50 grand, but they're like, oh, I won't do it for under 100,000 or something. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, back when I was trying to do stuff like Chuck 2 before I tried to crowdfund that. Uh, I went to different producers, even after I tried crowdfunding it. Uh, and I would talk with these producers, they would read the script and they would love it, and then they'd be like, uh, yeah, this movie is great, we really like it, but th the budget's too small. You, you wanted to make this for 30000 or 50000 uh, We see this like $500,000. And I'm like, o okay, let's make a fight. They're like, that's too big of a budget for me. I, I don't do anything over a hundred thousand. Tell them or about. I've met with producers right. where they were like, "This, this, I don't know. I, I don't like doing anything under a million. And I'm like, "Okay." And they're like, "This isn't a million dollar movie." What so like, I hear these weird, really weird things. But the funniest was uh, someone was like, "I'll give you a hundred thousand if you can get Ben Affleck to have a cameo in it." Yeah. <laughs> that was the weirdest one. So yeah, producers usually don't know what the hell they're talking about. At least in the indie film world that I've. Encounter. Do you find that, um, Indi and this is a question to, to Jason and Tiffany, do you guys find that the producers, um, you know, who aren't typical film producers have no idea, uh, they don't have a clue about the industry, they just think that the more... Mo yeah. I want that yeah, yeah, no, but th then the, the <laughs> thing is that our, 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 the way that we're pitching the project, like we're, we're really trying to get our act together before we go to Sundance because now we actually have footage, we have a quarter of our budget, and a great cast, because like after the event, I was like saying they were like, well, why don't the, the guys that funded the Cake Eaters want to make Tiny Dancer? Now, meanwhile, they hosted our big event, and you know they made They've four been so movies, supportive. and they awesome. yeah they That's made good. four movies that all went to a major film festival. But they you know they left the film business. They're like, we want to go dig oil, drill oil wells. <laughs> so 
the, the, the first question is, why don't the, the guys that invest in the cake eaters want to invest? And then they go, did the cake eaters make money? And then you have to tell them all these horrible things that's the truth. It's like, oh, it took three years for a movie to make money, <laughs> and the movie was $2 million budget, and so they sell all these little pieces overseas, and then, you know, after three years, you can break even. You know, these miserable facts. At the end of it, I wouldn't want to invest. So, sure. like, you know, I, it's, it's just, uh, I do find that, like, the people that don't know what it's about get scared because you can't, you know, it's so intangible. And the people that do know what it's about, you know, now they're, they don't want to invest unless you have, you know, obviously name talent attached. Or, yeah, Ben Affleck wants to do a cameo, you right. know. Now, it, it, kind of along that that thread there, you know, you're talking to these uh, potential investors or producers or how, whatever you want to call them, and, you know, you guys are, you know, on the Cake Eaters, you were the screenwriter, you know, you were a screenwriter, you also were in it, and, you know, you, but you weren't the director, and, you know, you weren't the person selling the movie overseas for all these little bits and pieces. Do you find that now that that job, unless, you know, once you, um, you know, maybe once you make it, maybe you'll get a sales agent that will help with a lot of this, but you find that a lot of the onus of the business part is on you now for this. Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, for better or worse, with the Cake Eaters, it was not because I was a writer, co-producer. And, you know, you have issue with that, but then when it's entirely on you, you, you know, you're the only you're the only one, you know, that to, to take care of it all. But, <clears throat> yeah, I feel like we're, we're, we're definitely doing everything. Now, we got a question from the audience here. Johnny Chronix says, uh, it seems that the best way to break in as a screenwriter is to shoot your own indie and hit the festival circuit. Do you feel that this is true? To break in as a screenwriter? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't know. Uh, I, you it's know a what? New York and L.A. logic, I think. You know what? I, I think that doing that is a great thing to do as a writer-director. Mm -hmm. But as a screenwriter, like... I can only speak from experience with the cake eaters that I was always waiting to get signed by a really big lit agency. Mm -hmm. You know, and the film played the Tribeca Film Festival, Kristen Stewart's in it, Bruce Dern, people, the films generally reviewed well. But like, the order of events was so bizarre, like, uh, when, when it played at Tribeca, every, every agent, you know, at, at the big agencies, they were like, call us when the movie sells, hmm. right? So then it doesn't sell for a year. Right. Right. And then it sells for a smaller, very, you know, smaller sale. You know, and then they they've moved on to other things. Right. So it's just like I I think like if you want to make it as a screenwriter, you should probably write something. And this is horrible because I I disagree with this, but you should write something that's that's very sellable mm -hmm. that you know is either a TV series or a studio film. Because then if you only want to work as a screenwriter, right? Right. But if you want to make an indie as a screenwriter, to me, you have to ask yourself, do I want to be a writer-director? And then if you do, yes, that's the answer, is to make an indie and take it on the festival circuit. So basically what you're telling me is, go and write Big Mama's House 4. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. I, that's <laughs> terrible to say, but I feel like my friends that are writers that are, are working, are, you know, are doing that kind of thing. And they always say, hey, man, it's great. You're sticking your guns and still doing these artistic projects. Best of luck. And when I try to go to agents and still show them scripts under a million dollars, you know, like I, I thought I thought I was going to get signed after the cake eaters, but all my scripts were like under a million dollars and stuff. And I, I don't know why I didn't realize that Don, I mean, like I should go write Big Mama's House. <laughs> well, that's why you're writing the baseball script now. Yep. Don't tell. <laughs> yes, we're gonna tell you. But let's let's go ahead and let's talk a little bit more about um, let's talk a little bit more about Tiny Dancer and how that kind of got rolling. Um, well, I, I think, like, it definitely came out of our frustration of what I was just talking about, that we, you know, we had a, a couple close calls with my script Red River, Chris Noth was interested in it, then we had, you know, before that Dream Country that Bill Pullman and Robert Loja are attached to, you know, and that's been, like, long-suffering, that's, like, gonna go and then it's not gonna go. And, you know, and even before that, we had a film called The Wedges that Kristen Stewart was attached to. And so we've just spent, you know, the last three or four years trying to make things within the, quote, bigger indie system. Like, you know, attach like a really cool name that's a really good actor that's up and coming and raise a million or no, two. Well, you're, he's forgetting a huge era when we tried to get other people to direct it. We got... Oh. Um, we are really good friends with Melissa Joan Hart, who's like the best person ever. It's and Clarissa. Yeah. It's Sabrina. Clarissa, yeah. Come on. Yeah, she, she, she seems like someone who 
I grew up with kind of, you know, hanging out watching her on TV and that I would enjoy hanging out with in person. Absolutely. She's the best person on earth. She's awesome. But she was attached to direct it and we wanted to make it totally commercial, like, like, totally, but it didn't happen. And then... Yeah, it was like Jamie Presley and Eva Mendes were, were like the people she was pursuing, you know. Yeah. And then it didn't happen and she had a second child and it just, you know, she's, she's awesome. We just um, said, oh, well, let's just try to do this ourselves, you know, and so... Um, we, you know, we wanted to sell it, you know, to a network or something, just like totally, just get it off our hands. But then and we then just like threw it. Like we waited nine months for Charlize Theron oh, yeah. with another director, and yeah. And then last year, Tiffany was like, because we a lot of friends of ours. I said I have to try the crowdfunding thing, or I won't be able to yeah. like rest. Because <laughs> you know, like our, fr our friend Gary King, you know, kept coming over, and he was like. You know, oh, wow! I made another one. Wow! I made another yeah, one. in the time, you know, you guys made the cake years, but in the in the last three years, I've made like seventeen movies for thirty five thousand dollars. <laughs> now, Gary would leave, and I'd be like, "Yeah, so he made seventeen movies. Okay, great." And I was like, "But I haven't made any other ones, you know." And I know, you know, that's the thing. It takes a long time to make a bigger film, mm -hmm. but like we were like, we do. We we feel like we can make a medium sized you know, micro-budget film, you know, like closer to a $200,000 film, we f we had to get it out of our system and try, like, you know, crowdfunding and try grants and all this this crazy stuff I never thought we'd be doing, like, you know, grant writing. I mean, who does that, Nick? Who does that? Um, <laughs> no, actually, uh, kind of um, somewhat related to this uh, from the audience here, Scott uh, Leas, actually, I never know how to pronounce his last name, asks, um, how did you guys manage to attach or attract uh, potential talent without the funding being there? You know, is it pretty much just like a friends of friends type of situation? Or, you know, because you go on and, you know, you're sitting there, oh, Eva Mendes, Melissa Nohar, all these people that, you know, whether you know them personally or whether, you know, you want to attract them, you know, or, you know, to the project based on the project, um, you know, and attach them to the project, you know, do you, those aren't all names that typically just come up in conversation for most independent filmmakers. Um, you know, how do you, how do you get to that point of getting the attention of these people without having the money first? Well, fortunately, I've been an actor for like 20 years and, you know, a lot of them are, are friends or people that, you know, Tiffany and I met like 10 years ago on a film that starred Daphne Rubin Vega and myself, you know, now Daphne's in our, our movie 10 years later. And, you know, uh, Sabrina, Melissa Joan Hart and I did a play together when we were like you know, coming up in New York. So, like, that circle and, of people, But another, you know, if you don't have that luxury, then, um... Yeah. I would recommend becoming f as friendly as possible with any agents. Mm -hmm. Everybody, nobody, like, um ever networks with the agents if they're not looking for representation, right? Right. right. So, but the, it's the agents, if they believe in you... Or manager. Yeah, if right. they believe in you and they like the script, they want to find good work for their clients. And there's so little good work out there, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, just getting agents to cover it, to get it into the little house of whatever agency, you know what I mean? Then they will say, gosh, this would be perfect for so-and-so who's always complaining that I don't bring him anything. Sure, absolutely. Now, let, I want to go ahead and switch gears briefly here, and let's talk about the Independent Collective and what the mission of, of that is. So, so, so we came together with our friend Brian and... Brian DeCastro over in LA, and we made this, um, we wanted to say, like, you would become a member if you gave a donation to the project. Mm -hmm. So we, we got fiscal sponsorship from NYFA, um, the New York Foundation of Arts, so that our project was a 501. And then we had this um, guy make a website that was really cool. And so if you gave 20, 100, 50, whatever, you would become a member of the Independent Collective, and our ultimate goal was to make this movie, and then we would be a body of people. An organization. That, you know, an organization that would then put up for vote what the next project would be. Yeah, like, like the, the idea was like, uh, in theory, it, it, in the grand idea, is like a Kiva model, you know, like... Right. We, the organization itself becomes a 501c3, so you make a project each year at first, we were like, let's make a project for $200,000 every year. But now we're thinking, okay, maybe we make a project for $50,000 every year. And it might be a play, 
a book, a record, a theater performance, a film, and you, your, in, you know, your donation entitles you to a vote. So each, you know, and then when we release a product, like we'll release Tiny Dancer, mm -hmm. make money back, and that money, you know, a percentage of that will go back into the independent collective to it, make the next project of the collective. It kind of sounds almost like a combination of the old American zoetrope kind of uh, yeah. collective yeah. versus and, and infused with a little bit of a more modern, like, corporation, stockholder type of situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's That's, communist. Yes. <laughs> Shh. We're in America. It's not, it's not American. No. <laughs> Oh, I see this comment about casting directors. That's another good person. That's like another good idea to, to get in with a casting director. Yeah, casting, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just I wanted to add really quickly that when we tried to get the cake eaters made, and even though I had I had connections as an actor, you know, it was impossible. Like we got it to Ellen Burstyn, and like her agent called me at my house from CAA, and I almost pooped in the floor. I was so nervous. <laughs> And he was like, what can you offer Ellen? And I looked around the apartment, and I just blurted out, oh, $100,000, right? <laughs> I did not have $100,000. And we got $100,000 from a doctor and, and thinking that that would be sufficient. And we went and had lunch at her beautiful house, and she was so sweet, you know, and then she basically said, realized pretty soon that we had no money. And then she was like, I, you know, I usually get paid $300,000 for my work in films, so if you don't have that, I really think that you should find somebody else. But I really like your script. And we left the meeting and think, this thing, this went great. <laughs> and it did not go great because, like, we couldn't get, we really couldn't get any of the cast for the cake years that we had until we were fully financed. So it is tricky. I mean, like, I tried to get Chris Noth attached. We had a meeting. You know, nobody wants to attach without money. It's just like you, like Tiffany said, you have to, like, work every agent, every casting director, you know, every channel to try to get interest. It's, it's, it's hard. I think it's very hard. You know, the, you're established. This is going to sound more like one of the, like a red carpet type of question, like a vapid, like, you know, uh, Academy Awards type of question. But do you still get, you know, with all these people that you're taking meetings with and, you know, or even just the... The the um, the people who manage these these you know movie stars and stuff like that. Do you guys still get starstruck at all? Oh, oh yeah. God. Yeah. God. Oh, I God. cried when I met Vernon at Peter's the other day. I don't. There was like a mental, like a mental illness. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Totally. I mean, like, yeah, absolutely. I'm trying to think of somebody recently. That you I were starstruck by Chris Noth. You, you you freaked out. Yeah. And I, I, yeah, yeah. They're, they're always, yeah, there's and always. He's been in two movies with Tracy Morgan and still can't speak when he goes, when he walks around. <laughs> well, yeah. I, I, I know, I mean, I, I really was hoping you would say Nick Basley from Film Snobbery, but oh, uh, no, <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> the only thing it would leave you speechless is like, wow, he really just has no hair. And he's, there's a lot of him. He needs to be less people. Ah, I like you the way you are. Nick, you, look very, you look very handsome. Yeah. Right oh, now. thank you. I, I, yeah, I need a shave and a haircut and about, I need Nutrisystem or some kind of, I need like man, one of those uh, Spanx, male Spanx. I need those. Oh, they, they make those. You don't need them. <laughs> they do make them though. So. I, I also see one more thing about the uh, independent collective. I see that it, we, it says, would you range out into other um, write, writers? That, that is the only yeah, thing. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah we yeah. just use mine because we, well, it's mine. But no, we like, we don't really have the ability to option stuff, you know, option, option right now. Yep. So we were like, let's start with the film we've been trying to make as a test project, right? Yeah, that's the but goal I don't, I don't want to make. We after this, we don't. With through the independent, like we don't want to make our own films. Right. We uh, help other directors and writers get their stuff made. Yeah. Now that also being said, you guys aren't the only pr people that have been using your your film as a test project. Um, I, I actually have used oh. your film as a test project myself. Oh, um, gosh, what did you find? Well, no, what we're going to be doing um, in the, the later of the years, we're going to be working on fundraising for films and stuff like that, including um, getting our uh, website into taking donations for films and stuff like that. And um, the first film that we were going to, um, the first project we were going to look at was uh, Tiny Dancer, and still is. It's just going to be oh, further on. Yeah, I, I don't know if you knew that. I thought I, I thought I told you. Um, well, yeah, but I didn't know how far it, I mean, I... I, I wasn't sure. Yeah, know. no, we're going to have um, our first uh, independent film screening series of the, the this year is going to be starting in April. Um, I've got a production meeting on that when we um, 
well, later on next month, and then um, after that, we've got uh, we're based upon the success of that first screening, we're going to set up a series of um, of fundraisers, like you know, because we're doing a dinner and a movie type of thing anyway, so it's going to be kind of like a hundred dollar a plate type of formal event, and the idea being that you know after the restaurant gets their cut. Um, you know, and, and we recoup at least expenses for uh, advertising, um, the rest of the money that we raise is going to go towards a, an independent film. And we're hoping that the momentum that we can use while we're promoting this event um, will have a, a, a very similar to Indiegogo-esque type of um, uh, system on our website that you'll be able to, uh, people will be able to make contributions, you'll be able to see the progress of those contributions, and then at, you know, once we hit a predetermined goal, let's say $2,000 or whatever to keep it small, uh, we just PayPal that crap all over to you guys. Oh wow. my god, yes. So. I remember this in the early stages, and it's just such a cool idea. I don't know if I, I almost said the F word. You can say the, you can say fuck all you want. Oh. Unless... Idea. <laughs> I was gonna say, unless the the little ones in the room, and he's definitely not gonna want to be in the room for the next guest. But um, <laughs> but uh, that being said, no, yes, yeah, so we are gonna raise some fucking money for some fucking films. Yeah. Yeah. But um, that that said, guys, I want to um, talk a little bit about the next projects uh, where you're gonna be next because we're we're running out of time because I'm and I'm I'm pissed because I'm having a really good time here. We but two blabbermouths and there's two of us. There's two of us. And I love that, you know. <laughs> But let's, um, Jace, you've got some stuff going on in, uh, at Sundance, and I want to talk a little bit about um, what you're going to be doing there. Yeah, I have two films out there. I'm so excited. Uh, one is called Price Check. It's with Parker Posey. Uh, it's a really sweet indie comedy. I love um, her, by the way. Yeah, and this is a great part for her. She's a more mature part, but still it's got that Parker Posey, uh, you know, shine on it. And... Uh, and another film called Predisposed with Melissa Leo, Jesse Eisenberg, and Tracy Morgan. So I'm really excited. I have two two parts in both of those movies, so we're going to go out and uh, and do it up and really focus on trying to raise the rest of our money for Tiny Dancer. We're going out with you know the the DVDs of the trailer, you know all the all the postcards. We're really going to like work Main Street, and nice. you know I think it'll be great having the the two films there will allow us access to you know all kind of stuff. So we're going to try to like. Now are these are these films already pre-sold or are they are you guys out there looking to to, to you know to, to get the uh, is it just to get the word out or to, to get people to throw some shekels at it? No, it's it's definitely to throw some shekels. The movie with Parker is is I'm not, I'm I'm sure they don't want me to say the budget, so so I won't. But it is a small film and a very much a labor of love. And the the one with Melissa Leo is it's still pretty small. I mean, I was surprised by the budget with, with the, the talent that they got, but neither one of them have distribution. You know, I mean, I think I read something that all the premieres at Sundance this year, you know, the premieres being, you know, I think Predisposed is in the premiere category, you know, the namier ones, not in the competition. None of them have distribution. So they're, the producers of both those are out there looking to, to sell them, yeah. Excellent. Now, and, and, you know, I, I would have to imagine that a film with, say, like Tracy Morgan, Melissa Leo, and, of course, yourself, and it would have no problem being bought up in, you know, in any sort of uh, capacity there. And also, I mean, Parker Posey, you can't, I don't see how you can go wrong, especially in, I would say, a foreign distribution type of situation with her, um, you know, but, uh, you know, obviously her, her, um, her American following is, is huge as well. So that's all very, very excellent. And I'm, I'm really happy to, uh, to see that you guys... I love, I love di discussing um, independent film with working actors, uh, producers, directors, the whole nine yards. And it looks like because you guys have your hands on a little bit of everything from you know, inception all the way to distribution, um, you, guys have a, you guys are always great people to have conversations with. And, and uh, I want to go ahead, but just before we cut you guys out, um, hopefully our, our guest will, uh, will bear with us a little bit. Our next guest will bear with us a little bit. I want to show everyone the trailer real quick to uh, Tiny Dancer just to see exactly what they should be funding uh, with some of their, their next, um, their next uh, you know, their next paychecks um, as well. So uh, we'll be right back with uh, Tiffany and Jay Spartak, and we will, uh, right after this little trailer for um, Tiny Dancer, we'll be right back.
I want it all. Yeah, I can be the best mom and I can be the best dancer. is the most amazing dancer in the whole planet. Well, we were kindred spirits. Um, I'll always love Lauren. I think sometimes the better thing to do when you're fighting so hard for something is to let it go. I want to dance again. Back on. In the company. Okay. This is my identity. This isn't. Do you know how people would die to have your life? I was the best. Folks, we're back. That was the trailer for Tiny Dancer. You can uh, become a member of the Independent Collective and uh, help get Tiny Dancer made by going to www.theindependentcollective.com slash join. Nick, thanks for showing that. Um, listen, I, I don't want you to think I do do movies about really violent events that don't have <laughs> women dancing, okay, and that, that are very macho. So that said, this is a movie about two women that want to dance again. They want to dance. They just want to dance, <laughs> dance, dance. I especially like this comment too, while it was showing. That says "crazy soundtrack, piano on acid." <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's our thoughts exactly. Johnny Chronix says, "Hold me closer, please." <laughs> yes, I love it. I love, <laughs> it. I love it. Cool. But uh, I want to thank you guys again for coming on. Hopefully, we'll uh, we'll get a chance to connect again sometime in the near future, and we'll uh, we'll go ahead and um, you know I, I wish you guys the best of luck in getting the film sold and and uh, and, and also finishing uh, getting uh, Tiny Dancer you know off there. I mean, obviously, you guys yeah, you're gonna make it. No one worries about you guys. You guys are fine. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, we don't worry about you either. Yeah. Oh, well, you should, because I worry every single day. Um, <laughs> uh, I want to thank you guys, um, and uh, thank you for coming on the show. I, I, thank again. you so Oh, wait, well, let's tell everyone real quick where can we, uh, where we can uh, go ahead and find you guys. It's, it's uh, twitter.com slash jacebartok and twitter.com slash tiffanybartok. Yes. And also uh, your production company, Vinyl Foot uh, Productions. It's twitter.com slash vinylfoot, V-I-N-Y-L-F-O-O-T-E. And, um, oh, I know. <laughs> uh, I, that's why I said it. No kidding. Um, so, uh, and, and what else am I missing? I know, I know there's more. Yeah, I'm blogging for Movie Maker once a week. So if you go to moviemaker.com and read the blog, you I, can uh, catch up on, you know, the whole experience of how we're crowdfunding Tiny Dancer. Oh, we love our good friends over at Movie Maker. We really do. I'll say hi to Jennifer Wood right now. <laughs> hey! Yay! Hey. Uh, yeah, and I've read I've read um, some of your crowdfunding articles too, and and they're right on. They're spot on. So oh, well, yeah, thanks. you guys are you guys are good. So again, thank you guys so much for coming on the show and and thanks for uh, having us. And, 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 and we'll, we'll, we'll see we'll see out west. I, I hope so. Awesome. Maybe, possibly. <laughs> we'll talk soon, guys. Bye, Bye. Thank you. Bye, Jerry. Bye, Jerry. Bye. <laughs> Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, husband and wife team, Jif Tiffany and Jay Spartak, um, and they're, I'm sure their little guy was already asleep because it's way past their, his bedtime, but um, we've got another guest right now. Normally we would cut away to an ad or some other bullshit, but we're not going to do that right now. We've got so much more uh, show to kind of give you guys, so we're going to kind of continue, go right into it. Um, I'm going to start the, uh, I'm going to start the bidding? No, um, we're going to start the, the next... Um, we're going to start the next, there we go, I got something queued up here. We're going to start the next segment uh, real quick first by throwing in a, uh, the trailer for the movie we're going to be talking about called uh, I Am, um, 
I'm sorry, I got it right here. Da, 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 da. I believe it's called I Am Santa Claus. Let me just double check because I'm an idiot. It is. It is, yes. All right. It's called I Am Santa Claus, and uh, we got a, we got a quick little... Uh, I'm Tommy, by the way. That's Tommy Avalone there, sir, people, other people. <laughs> He'll be the guest. He's coming on next, right after uh, this little uh, thing. Wow, I just the show, show just totally broke down from here. Uh, okay. But uh, <laughs> we'll be right back, folks. Uh, stick around. I, I saw one Santa who said that he made $10,000 in a 24-hour period between December 24th and December 25th. Make $10,000 uh, cash. Santa Claus lives in the North Pole where it snows there all the time and it's very cold. Santa Claus's job is to go down the chimney and deliver the presents. Here I've got a full business now. I have a Santa school, a wardrobe company, a booking agency. I am a real estate agent for a Coa Banker Olympic here in Southern California. I don't make a lot of money modeling, but I enjoy doing it. It's not a job. I guarantee you, if you put the Pope's picture up and Santa Claus's picture up, more people know Santa Claus than know the Pope. I won't walk into Walmart because Walmart's un-American. They sell you Chinese sh instead of American stuff, so I will not walk into one. And we're back. Um, yes, this was uh, I had the trailer for one of the trailers, one of the clips for I Am Santa Claus. And uh, we are here with our, uh, our good friend I met down in uh, the First Glance Film Festival in Philadelphia where he was uh, showing his movie Calendar Girl. Uh, Mr. Tommy Avalone, hello, sir. Hello, how are you? I'm doing well, man. And, and you know, I got to tell you, I didn't get a chance to get around to doing like a comparison shot here. But I want to show everyone here now. The guy I have up right now, this is Tommy. Okay, now uh, up on the screen. Now, um, I'm going to throw a picture, of, just so people can remember, of Jerry. Now, picture Jerry with a little bit more facial hair in, his, in, that, in this picture. They look very eerily alike. Now, I, um, that, that, I'm, very, I'm very new to Skype, so I, I, don't, I don't see anything. You're, you don't have to see. I'm showing the people that are watching at, at uh, home on their... On their well, then I agree. Yes, yeah. you should. Uh, however, you are far more attractive, and I think I'm going to shit can Jerry for you. Okay. No. Can you hear me good? I can hear you just fine, sir. How are you? Great. I'm just, uh, I, I just got Skype two days ago, so I'm just figuring all this stuff out. I'm really, really excited. I, I, I asked people, hey, do you, do you Skype? And they, uh, they don't care. They don't, they don't care? You know, it's yeah. funny. I, I would not be able to, I would not be where I am today literally interviewing you without Skype. Um, it's, it's, I've had so many, especially for like overseas meetings and stuff like that, Skype just really seems to be much cheaper than a, uh, a phone, you know, a cell phone bill. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I, it's just weird because I, I, most Skypes, you can see people, right? Um, on some of them, yeah. Well, I mean, if you have a webcam or something, yes. And, and in this, with the particular software that we use, um, we do have the ability to broadcast that kind of stuff, but we're not 100% in the confidence area because we really do need a new production computer and we don't know what your bandwidth looks like and all that kind of bullshit so we if you could just do me a favor just call me back when you're ready then uh, call me back <laughs> <laughs> wow all right holy shit i just got punked yeah, i love it you went right into that i did man you that was i gotta wonder how long you were setting that shit up for <laughs> you'll never know man i feel like a pawn now i gotta tell you Let's go ahead and let's let's talk real quick about um, how, where where you and I met. We met at the First Glance uh, Film Festival in Philadelphia, I believe, uh, yeah. where you guys were showing Calendar Girl. Um, let's right. let's talk about that movie real quick. And right. uh, for those folks at home who don't know about it, give them the spiel. Uh, well, Calendar Girl. Uh, so you don't, so I don't have to explain it. You can just go to calendargirlthemovie.com and watch the trailer. Or it's it's a movie about a uh, you know uh, this killer who's killing girls uh, one from each month, you know, like a counter. Let me just tell you, my, uh, I'm not good at explaining movies. I just go, hey, watch the trailer. But it's, it's, a, comedy, it's a comedy horror, and, uh, you know, 
we're at the month of December where it's the last girl that he's going to kill and put in his calendar, and then here goes the drama. Nice. Here's a better way of explaining it. Corbin Burnson, Gilbert Godfrey, and Brian O'Halloran are in it. Brian O'Halloran, and you know, uh, uh, J- uh, Jerry did an interview. I almost said you because you guys look so much alike. Uh, J- Jerry did a um, an interview with Brian O'Halloran at Comic Con in New York, and uh, they, he had the Calendar Girl poster in his uh, little booth, and uh, and he spoke very highly of you guys, from what I understand. Oh, awesome! Yeah, no, O'Halloran's a good guy. Yeah. Uh, I- one more question about uh, Skype. Yes. Can other people see me? Because Mark Bell just texted me saying he can see me. He can. <laughs> Well, I mean, he can't... I didn't dress up, guys. I didn't dress up. <laughs> nice boxers, by the way. Um, no. I wore a Darkwing Duck t-shirt. Darkwing Duck. Wow, that takes me back. <laughs> I love that. My... What was that? Uh, oh, the, the Disney... Uh, there was like that Disney, like, two, three-hour... Disney, Disney Afternoon. Yeah, with DuckTales and gummy bears and all that. Hell yeah. Nice. I See, I'm loving it. I'm having a very nostalgic evening tonight. Um, uh, I'm also... And Mark Bell from Film Threat is in it. Uh, he's in the background uh, stabbing someone. I, I, you know, he looks like he would have those tendencies. <laughs> yeah, he's texting me and making sure I mention it. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> him and I, him and I were talking actually about um, him and I were talking before the show, as a matter of fact, and he actually relates to the announcement that I have at the end of the show. So, Ooh. yeah, how about them, Apple? So we're still going to keep that under wraps, but that's a little teaser for you folks out there to keep, continue uh, listening to uh, Tommy and I banter on. Um, what was your position in this, uh, in, in Calendar Girl? Uh, Calendar Girl, I uh, produced it along with uh, John Ganeri. Uh He's uh, him, uh, and he produced it, and then Derek Lindemann uh, directed it. Uh, Faith Brody wrote it. Uh, Jensen Booker is in it. So there you go. There, there you go. Definitely. Now, <laughs> how succinct. Um, no, and, and when I tell you guys, it's, you guys it's were a good movie. I mean, like seriously though, it's like you know, there's there's pitch people and there's other people, and then I'm the guy that's good. I just see it. You know, give me a ninety minutes or so. I just uh, you'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Now, I want to talk also about right now. You are doing a crowdfunding campaign for I Am Santa Claus. Yes. Yeah, we need to talk it's, about that. I'm better at doing that pitch because I know. I mean, that's the anything about Calendar Girl, but this is easier because I'm like so into it right now, you know? Mm-hmm. Calendar Girl, we made that like a year and a half ago, I think. <laughs> you got a real short-term memory, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know. <laughs> so, uh, all right, well, let, let's go ahead. Let's talk about I Am Santa Claus. We showed a little clip from it here, and, uh, and I know that people are frothing at the mouth and probably covering their children's eyes and ears as to not dispel the illusion, um, but... Uh, Tell us a little bit about your, the, I don't want to say the inspiration for making the movie, because that sounds really trite and shitty, but uh, tell me a little bit about the inspiration you had for making I Am Santa Claus. Well, I mean, you know, I have a fascination with what happens when you leave, you know, like uh, what happens when someone goes away from you, and what life do they go back to, and December 26th, you know, what lives do Santa Claus uh, go back to, what, what's, what's their deal, do they have a wife, do they have a kid, is it the North Pole, you know? So uh, me and my wife were just walking around the mall, and I was like, you know, that'd be, that'd be fun to do. You know, and as we started, like, researching and playing around with it, we just realized, like, it's, it's a pretty crazy world. Like, there's, like, these organizations where you, you know, you know card-carrying, do-paying Santa Claus. There's the, the amalgamated order of real bearded Santa Clauses. There's the fraternal order of real bearded Santa Clauses. Because I, I picture it as a mafia type of situation where like if you if you don't if you go against the wishes of the godfather Santa Claus uh, you know they will send a couple other bigger Santa Clauses and some reindeer to stomp your ass I mean yeah I guess I mean there's <laughs> I mean it's 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 good guys that are in a group but you know sometimes these older men would fight I mean they're old guys you know I mean no, you strip away that that red suit. They're they're older gentlemen, you know. Uh, some of them will fight. Some of them will just be jolly. But I'm sure that's happened. <laughs> <laughs> it really all depends on what soundtrack we're playing, you know. <laughs> yeah, they, they, you got a you got a point. Um, because I know that anything having to do with uh, Christmas in a mall makes me homicidal. So. Um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I used to hate Christmas, but like doing this movie so far is really, I, I guess, I don't want to say uh, gave me more of a Christmas spirit, but I just respect the holiday so much more. Because these guys, like, 
there's Santa Claus all year round. Like, just because, you know, you're not having Christmas lights on, the, the holiday doesn't quite end for them. You know, we, we've dealt with a couple year-round Santa Clauses that really can make money uh, throughout this with uh, Santa schools, Santa Cruises, selling the Santa Now, the houses. question is, do they take Santa Cruises to Santa Cruz? <laughs> I don't know that. Okay. That's a good one. That, there we I go. Like that. Oh, you can keep that one. That was for free. That's for you. All right. I'm going to write that down. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> um, so, so far, as far as the crowdfunding aspect of this movie has gone, you know, where, where are you, how much are you trying to make, and how has the experience been for you so far? Well, I mean, um, see, I never really got into Kickstarters. You know, I, I've seen so many people, I guess, do it wrong. Like, I've seen one that they did, the, hey, you could become an honorary producer. You know, I thought that was such a, like, a joke. <laughs> but I... Um, I first got introduced to Kickstarter like in a good way was uh, when John Foy did his movie that won Sundance last year for Resurrect Dead. Uh-huh. Um, and I donated to that, and I just thought, that, you know, this guy, he made a movie on his own, and like he had a chance to go to Sundance, but he didn't have the money for it. And what a great way to use um, the medium there, you know, for, for Kickstarter. And then there's a couple others that I, I found throughout that. And I just, like, as we were starting this, this process, you know, we... I. I want to say June or July we started going around on Facebook and finding different Santa Clauses and either we travel to them or we pay for them to come over here and that was kind of just out of my pocket like credit card stuff just to get like bios like on what Santas we decide we wanted to follow and uh, we knew and it was going to be... I was going to ask you actually how you found these Santas because in my mind I see you as like a Ryan Seacrest, Simon Cowell kind of amalgam doing like an American Idol for Santa Clauses and just like next, you're shite, get away, you know? <laughs> well, I mean, uh, well, I was at a, a horror convention, uh, the Chiller Festival in North Jersey. So far that story is not sounding out good for a, for a Santa story. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yeah, I was at a horror convention, right? And I just... I just crazy ass dude with tattoos comes walking by but I noticed he had this white beard long white hair uh, and a red uh, shirt and I was like ah, you know it's one of those things where you don't want to ask you kind of have to you know you're like hey man I'm sorry I'm sorry but are you Santa Claus you know <laughs> and he's like you know with this thick New York accent he's like here's my card you know I'm like I found him on Facebook and he's one of our Santa's actually we're following. His name's Frank, and he's a super, super great guy. Uh, but, uh, yeah. You know, I, that's really funny, because when I see guys that are wondering, they have, like, long hair, long beard, sandals, I'm like, are you Jesus? And they're like, no, dirty hippie. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, this this dude had a long black hair, long black uh, beard, and tattoos, and, like, no one would want to sit next to him in, like, the New York subways, you know? But then the dude dyes his hair like uh, uh, white and wears a red T-shirt. And now, like people are like those same people who wouldn't sit next to him are now putting their kids on his lap. You know, like there's there's this <laughs> weird like hidden like trust and just uh, uh, hair dye. Now, without naming names, when you were kind of scouting out for Santas, did you find you know obviously you got these Santas they got kids on their laps all day long. Did you find anyone who you were like someone's watching this guy right? Like, did you find anyone who was kind of, uh, a, let's say, funny? Well, no. I mean, there's such a built-in trust that comes with the red suit, or a, a respect, I guess, for the red suit. Um, you know, everyone's uh, not perfect, and everyone has flaws, you know. But uh, for that minute that the, their kid is on their lap, these guys will do anything they can to be perfect. And it, it's kind of interesting in that regard. But I, I say what you're saying. And, you know, I mean, people do think that sometimes. But at the end of the day, you know, what are they going to do right in front of you, you know? <laughs> you got a point there. But, you know, uh, I always go back to, I think it was an episode of um, Psych. Where there was a, a dude, it was a con artist who you was... You mean it's like the one where Corbin Burnson, that's also in Calendar Girl? Corbin Burnson, who also just got, they just announced that they were doing a, another season seven of Psych. So, um, yeah, he was... Yeah, no, I follow Corbin Calendar on Twitter. Calendar Girl. He was in Calendar Girl. <laughs> <laughs> Calendar Girl? You mean that also stars Brian O'Halloran? Clerks is Brian O'Halloran? Um, yeah, and I say decaf in it. <laughs> 
And Mark Bell is in it. From Mark Bell is in it. Now, Jerry made a, a great, uh, funny comment in the, the chat room. He said, um, Jerry said, Mark Bell wasn't asked to be in it. He was just in the background stabbing a guy. <laughs> <laughs> he was showing how to stab a guy. <laughs> yes. You've got to do it properly. There's a, there's a method to it. Um, <laughs> vital organs. You know, that way you get the most blood. So, um, so you, you're doing that. How far um, through making the doc are you? I mean, we got we got our Santas, we got little bios on them, so that way, you know, anyone who wanted to invest in the movie can see the Santas we are going to follow, you know? But as far as actually shooting the movie, we're really kind of just starting, you know? I mean, like, Christmas just wrapped, and a lot of these Santas will have their annual luncheons where they all get together and compare Christmas stories. And in uh, late January, I'm going out to San Diego to uh, the 18th annual, uh, you know, uh, Santa luncheon, so uh, I'll be hanging and compare. Well, they'll be telling me stories of their lives, and I'm just I'll be videotaping. Interesting. And and do you? I I just it's it's got to be such a weird thing too. Like I mean, you do you worry at all about a um you know kids watching the flick and possibly no. going like, hey, what do you mean there's no Santa Claus? You know what I mean? No, or something no, of that because, nature. I mean, like honestly, like I mean, what? Like I mean, if if there's a uh, Live action, the movies are PG thirteen nowadays, right? Only, only like cartoons are G or PG, or right? Right. So I mean, so anyone who's like you know ten to thirteen years old will be watching this movie, and by that time they know that there's no real Santa, you know. And you know whether or what rating we get, I'm sure, I'm sure these kids will already know something <laughs> about that. Because you know? I'm looking at your best case scenario, to be honest with you. I'm looking at this as you make this movie, and it is so intriguing, and, and something that I haven't actually seen done as far as a, an actual document, uh, documentary is, done, um, is concerned. And so you, let's say you know, it's done, you get on the fest circuit, you get into, like, let's say, Tribeca or Sundance or something like that, you know, and then from there you get picked up, and boom, let's say a year later or less, you're on, like, the IFC channel, where, like, any kid can watch it, you know what I mean, or any kid with cable, anyway, um, you know, can watch it, the IFC channel, or even, say, like, uh, you know, HBO or Showtime or something like that, or, uh, or even, you know, there's the, doc is there a documentary channel now or something? I don't know, I don't know, <laughs> fucking whatever, I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, I'm looking, I'm, but by that point, you're going to be too busy counting your money like Gus Van Sant in, uh, in, you know, strike back. In, yeah, strike back, exactly, and, uh, you know, and just be like, whatever. So. I mean, yeah. Look, I mean, I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, a movie maker. I ain't a parent. All right. <laughs> you know, I mean, if the kids <laughs> want to watch the movie, they want to watch the movie. If I can ruin their lives, great. <laughs> <laughs> And you can quote me on that. <laughs> I will. I, that's totally like that's going on. That should go on your DVD box. Like parents, uh, parents not even remotely cautioned. I don't give a shit about how you raise your kid. Um, <laughs> So, do you have any other projects that you're working on uh, with anyone else uh, besides I Am Santa Claus, or what's the next step for, let's say, Calendar Girl, or anything like well, that? Well, I mean, Calendar Girl, we're looking for distribution, and um, we, uh, we did pretty well with the festivals. We won, uh, I think, Best Comedy at Woods Hole, uh, Best in Fest at First Glance, Best in Fest in Hoboken International. We're about to play a uh, New Jersey festival January 20th in New Brunswick. Uh, the director, Derek Lindemann, is very excited to go there because he loves fat sandwiches. Uh, <laughs> I'm not it. sure if anyone knows what the, I mean, you know what fat sandwich is, right? I don't, but it sounds delicious. Uh, well, if, if fat sandwiches are just like a combination of crap on a sandwich. Like, you can get a cheesesteak, chicken fingers, mozzarella sticks all in one. That pretty you much know? sounds and like my average Saturday. Yeah, it's, just, it's, it's, it's a, uh, a, a college grease truck that... Uh, Everyone in our Double Windsor family uh, loves. I love the. By the way, I love the Double Windsor family so far. Oh, thank From you. what I've met of you guys, you guys of all the filmmakers I met at, and don't tell anyone this. The <laughs> we'll keep it just between you and me, even though we're doing a live show. Um, between us, Skypers. Yes. Um, don't don't tell anyone else, but I gotta tell you, of all the people I met at first glance, uh, Bill included, uh, <laughs> you guys cracked me up the most. Oh, good. Uh, yeah, totally. I mean, and also, I love that you come dressed for success. Maybe not for my show. My show, like, I'm lucky you, you know, you pick, you know, probably the 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 big sandwich out of your belly button. But uh, it's a fat sandwich. The fat sandwich. 
But, uh, oh, and also, yes, oh, I appreciate that. And uh, I also uh, produced a movie with Devil Windsor Films called Mancation that we're just finishing editing right now. And that has uh, Joey Fatone in it, uh, Danica McKellar, uh, Mike Starr. Um, see, we, we put a wrestler in every single one of our movies. Um, uh, my movie, Community College, that's coming out on DVD this summer, um, it has Blue Meanie in it. We did a movie uh, called Buddha with Jim Neville Neidhart in it. Uh, Counter Girl has Al Snow. Mancation has Tommy Dreamer. And yes, in a documentary, Full Santa Clauses, we worked in a wrestler. <laughs> Not going to tell you who yet, but uh, it's pretty amazing. That I, I, I'm, now I'm going to have to watch it just so I can kind of pick the dude out. Like, he flat out says it, right? Like, you, you kind of you tell his little snippet of story. Oh, yeah. It's oh, going to be great. And it's the biggest wrestler we've ever worked with. Nice. It, nice. It's, I mean, look, I love wrestling. <laughs> you know? And everyone at Double Windsor Films loves wrestling. And we're like, when, like when, the fact that we got this okay from him, we're like, all of us, we're like, oh, this is great. <laughs> We're you know, just going to make the movie just so we can hang out with him. You know, it's funny. I, I was uh, just looking over. I got a message from Jerry, like a, 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 an IM from Jerry, not in, the, um, not, not in the, the chat room. And he said, I'm betting it's Captain Lou Albano. I'm like, he's dead. Funny story. <laughs> uh, Jim, Jim the Anvil Neidhart, when, oh, I probably shouldn't be saying, whatever. Jim the Anvil Neidhart, right? Uh -huh. uh, he, when he was in Booted, he tried to buy drugs with a son, Captain Lou Albano doll. <laughs> And he had just died like two days before. Oh, man. Wow. Exclusive. Exclusive. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Wow. Yeah, and, 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 wow. From the Jim the Anvil, the Hart Foundation, going yeah. back? Oh, yeah. Good Lord. He, he was a crazy man. I think he asked every single one on set for something. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, you go on eBay the next day, and you're like, I know all of this stuff. It's <laughs> all from our set. And, um, <laughs> well, no, I mean... Drugs. Oh, for drugs. Oh, okay. <laughs> you know, I, I told a story. I don't know if I told it here on the on the show, but I told I've been uh, a story recently. Every single festival I've been to in the past year, I've been offered drugs, either to have some or to get sold some, oh, yeah? <laughs> and it has been so awkward. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, have you ever been in a car with uh, a <laughs> Jim Neal <Neville> Night <laughs> car with a signed Kevin Lou Bono doll I'm trying to get drugs? <laughs> and let me just say this. Not I yet. Know. I am not a drug guy. I have a glass of wine with me right now, but I don't do drugs. <laughs> that's about, uh, drugs are bad. Uh, that, that's just to loosen you up for the show, right? <laughs> yeah, well, that's just to keep me awake because I have my bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good Lord. Um, oh, I love this right here. Sean Fallon here in the, the, on Twitter says, if I weren't driving from L.A. to Vegas, I'd be watching film snobbery. I like that. That's Virgin yeah. Alexander's uh, Sean Fallon. Director, I like him. Met him in uh, met him at the Orlando Film Festival right after I was done with uh, Philly. Did you then go to Disney World? Because that's what I would have done. We went to Jerry and I went to Universal Studios for Halloween Horror Nights. I uh, I was I went there a year ago with my wife, and she got real scary in the leave. Now I gotta ask you, as an independent filmmaker, is how on board is your wife with your career, or does she? She's good. She doesn't want to work for a living, so if I make it, that's you know she makes it. <laughs> That is a good way to look at it because I, every time I tell a girl that I go out on a date on, which is the one girl I've you know gone on a date on, um, uh, no, she, I, when I tell a girl like, oh, I work with independent filmmakers, immediately you could tell like, I really hope the guy's picking up the check for this lunch because I yeah. never want to see him again. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, it's, it's 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 you know, I mean, obviously, uh, I wouldn't marry her. For, I wouldn't marry her if she wasn't supportive. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Oh, I could. Hey, she could have had money. Who knows? Um, <laughs> well, then I wouldn't be on Kickstarter now, would I? <laughs> nice cover. <laughs> so um, it's I am Santa Claus Movie dot com. I am Santa Claus Movie dot com. I am Santa Claus Movie dot com. <laughs> um, I want to go ahead and I want to give these guys another taste of the movie though real quick um, we got another clip from I Am Santa Claus I want to show with you guys out, uh, share with you guys out there and uh, hopefully I, I queue up the right one here um, we're going to show, up, uh, show it and then when we come back we're going to have a little bit more with Tommy Avalone and uh, we'll be right back
Just let me know what it is afterwards because I can't see it. Oh, I, I will. Uh, you'll you'll hear me start talking again. <laughs> okay. So, see, that's how it works. See, that when the uh, a little tidbit for those uh, the audience out there who doesn't know, um, we have no way of muting our guests. So, basically, when we go play a clip or something like that, it, for however long that clip is, it's just like two to three minutes of silence. And if they're not watching the show, um, even with the delay, they don't know when we're back. So, I have to usually go like, a, and we're back, you know, type of situation. That's like the cue. So, there you go. Hey, Film snobbery you, secrets. Play the clip, right? I'm playing. The, I'm gonna play the fucking clip. All right, <laughs> we'll be right back. Richard was a Santa Claus at a nearby mall here for about seven years. He's eighty now. He's about to retire. Uh, he's uh, he thinks this will be his last Santa Claus season. Um, he's been going to China every year for the last several years, and uh, they they treat him like a king over there. I don't know if he can give it up. How are you? I'm this super. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, this right in here won't grow. Yeah, that's come out lately, too. The older you get, the less beard grows. Yes, and the thinner it gets. The thinner it gets, mm. yeah. I think this will probably be my last year that I'll go to China. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because I want to look good, and the beard just isn't up to par. Two airplane tickets round trip to Hong Kong. They pick me up by limousine, drive me an hour and a half into Xinjiang. I stay there from the, I leave on the 1st, and I leave there on the 27th, and you get back before you start. It's 15 hours there and 12 and 11 and a half coming back. Got a tailwind. Right. And I live in a Crown Plaza hotel for the 27 days. I get all meals. Uh, fresh flowers and fruit every day, and what my wife loves, laundry. <laughs> and they treat me like I'm a king. And this is your last year? This, uh, I have a contract for this year, and I don't think I'll renew next year, because I'm, I'm 80 years old, and that flight does take a lot out of you. How do you feel about that? I feel sad, because, uh, they're it's just, they treat you so wonderfully over there. Now, now, will this be the last year of being Santa, or? No, I'll probably do uh, charity work here. But I won't go to a mall. I'll just do friends and family and what have you. I said, old Santas never die. They just keep doing parties. And we're back with our guest, Tommy Avalone, uh, the director of the upcoming doc, I Am Santa Claus. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> so um, I'm going to ask a kind of a general question, but how did you decide that you wanted to kind of get into filmmaking? Or was it, you know, just kind of like, it's a job, I like it, seems cool? No, uh, you know, when I was younger, I just had a video camera and... Uh... I had like a wrestling dummy, you know, like one of those, like a... Uh, the wrestling... wrestling buddies? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and we just would videotape ourselves, me and my friends would just videotape ourselves wrestling them. And that lasted a year. <laughs> <laughs> and then we eventually started just uh, remaking like uh, Mad TV sketches, like That's My White Mama and stuff like that. <laughs> and it, we just were like, oh, let's just start writing our own stuff, you know? And we... We did that for a while, and then eventually, you know, we made a couple of movies with our friends and played them at, like, local theaters, and we did pretty well, like, as far as, like, you know, showings and uh, people showing up and paying for it and stuff like that, and then uh, eventually we figured out everything we were doing wrong, for the most part, and made Community College, and that, that was, like, our, my first, I guess, movie without uh, a bunch of... You know, like, I just would, like parts from my friends and the, so there'd be like 20 main characters yeah. <laughs> and, and then like so now it was just like we're like alright let's break it down to four and like try to do better and uh, so that was the first thing and then I from doing community college that movie took me like five years I met like uh, Derek Lindemann and uh, John Ganeri Derek in college and John through a mutual friend Michael Cision and we just started working together so it was, it's always been you know 
things we like to do. I mean, God knows I'm not getting paid a lot. No. If anything. If anything. Well, and that's the typical independent filmmaker kind of thing. Now, I, I want to ask about the Kickstarter thing. Now, you're, you've got this going on right now. You're, gonna, you're trying to raise some dough. Um, what happens if you don't raise the money? Because, I mean, well, with Kickstarter, we all know if you don't make the goal, nothing happens. Well, we've already raised the 10000 we wanted, but we want more. We want more. <laughs> okay, well, that answers the question. You've already got it. So I want to make sure well, that... No, it, uh, no but, I'm sorry. I thought I got cut out for a second because you didn't laugh at the joke I made. No, no, but, definitely uh, not. Uh, that wasn't an accident. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> I kid, no, uh, I yeah, kid. So we, uh, we, we, we did pretty decent where we made our 10000 uh, right before right before the new year. So, yeah, so January 1st, we had reached our goal. And um, right now, I think we're sitting at 10700 mm -hmm. Obviously, like, between Kickstarter and Amazon, they take 10%. So we're probably coming in almost about $10,000, which is good. I mean, ultimately, that's not our budget. You know, it's just our start. It's our kickstart. Ho, ho, ho. Look what he did. I see what you did there. <laughs> I've been saying that one for a while. Trust me. But, uh... <laughs> Uh, so I would like, I mean, we got, we finished this January 19th, so what's that, like, less than six days, less than That's week. next week, yeah, it's next Thursday. Yeah, yeah, so, um, at 1 p.m. actually, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I, w I would like to see it get to 15, who knows, you know, I mean, there's the last week push, you know, I mean, the incentives are still there, I feel like we have very good incentives, no one's being an honorary producer. <laughs> uh, and, why, why don't you, know, you give them a little, give them a sousson, a little taste of uh of what the uh your perks are well i mean it's, it's nothing out of the ordinary you know uh, i think 25 dollars gets you a christmas card and the soundtrack um i think 50 gets you the copy of the movie uh 100 will get you a special thanks in imdb and along with some of our back catalog movies uh 250 uh same sort of thing with i think some posters 500 dollars an associate producer top you know um on screen front card sort of associate producer stuff um a thousand i forget a thousand is something gets you a little more <laughs> <laughs> but you know i mean whenever i honestly i mean this is probably like the nerd in me like as long as i get a special thanks that's what i look for when i go through kickstarters i mean because i mean that's just the way i kind of look through life is like i just want to thank you you know there's so much things that i'll do where i I don't need to get paid. Just, you know, give me a good thanks. No, I, I hear that. You know what? I, I, I agree with that. Um, although, uh, it's funny. The way I like when people say thank you is when they give me large sums of money. True. Yeah. And that's pretty great. Yeah. But, Nothing uh, says thank you like a Benjamin. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's funny. I, I've been going through my Facebook, and, like, anyone I've talked to throughout the years, like, hey, remember that time I did you a favor? Well, now it's time for me to cash in. <laughs> now, we do have a question here from Johnny Chronics in the, in the, uh, the chat room. said, uh, how do you film the project beforehand without having the budget? Oh, that was just credit cards. I mean, I just, I just you know, uh, paid for flights and paid for this, sort of stuff like that. I got you. Quick trips to the glory hole. I understand. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, it's just one of those things where, like, I believe in it. You know, I, I believe, like, out of any movie that we've done, you know, this is one of those things where it's like... Uh, People have very much responded to it. I mean, uh, working with Calendar Girl and uh, Mancation, you know, they tell you if you want distribution, you put a big star in your movie, you know. Well, we have the most famous person in the world, and it's not costing us Brad Pitt prices. We have Santa Claus. <laughs> now, and, and we have five of them. <laughs> we have five so, Santas, no Jesus. You're good. Yeah, well, I mean, who knows? You can We're sell that. <laughs> But, I mean, it's it's one of those things where it's it, I know it's going to be a great film. Uh, this, the people we're following are fantastic. I mean, their lives are interesting enough. Just being Santa Claus is that much more, you know. Um, and it's like, it's it's an annual film, you know. And you can, it's relevant once a year. And it's not like, you can't say that about a lot of movies, you know. I mean, it, uh, hopefully it could be played 24 hours on TBS, which I know will never happen, trust me. Oh, you kidding but me? With the amount of that the, they play uh, Big Bang Theory on TBS, like, you could totally get your Santa Claus movie played on TBS. The, well, Lord I, knows they've got the programming time. <laughs> and the joke being is the fact that they play uh, A Christmas Story 24 hours on Christmas. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And which Scotty Schwartz is in my movie Community College, he stuck his tongue to the pole in that movie. Oh, we all know who Scotty Schwartz is. We've okay, all seen good. the behind the music on him, um, <laughs> so to speak. So, uh, what's the um, 
what's the deal with uh, with um, as far as how else are you what are you what else are you doing to promote uh, the the flick? I mean, you've got a, a website in the works for after the Kickstarter is already done, or what's yeah, your? Yeah, I mean, the Zion you know, Santa Claus movie uh, dot com website will go to you know a site or a Facebook page once the Kickstarter is done. You know, we just have it directed right to the Kickstarter right now. Mm -hmm. You know, and we we try to we we'll try to like uh, you know update our, our our backers throughout the year. You know, giving pictures of like where we're at. Like, I mean, just these three months alone. Like, I mean, uh, next Friday I'm in Detroit. The Friday after that I'm in San Diego. Uh, I know February I'm going to be in Texas and Detroit again, and then March. See, February, you're skipping out on my birthday again. I see how it is. I'm sorry, when is your birthday? Uh, in February. I said in February, skipping out on my birthday again. Well, I mean, I, I think I'm only going to be in Georgia and Florida for February, so I'll make sure to stop by Massachusetts. <laughs> It's funny, Jerry said in the, the chat room, and I have to, because it, it just made me chuckle when I saw it, it said, um, you should retire, if you want to play it on TVS, you should t retitle it Tyler Perry's I Am Santa Claus. Yeah, <laughs> Tyler Perry's awful. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, and uh, Alexi Anastasio actually has a couple, uh, from the chat room here, has a couple of questions. The first one is, sure. um, how about asking like 100 people that you know uh, to spread the word and giving them examples on how they can? Have you tried stuff uh, like that for promotion? And um, I'll, I'll do another ad add on onto that. What about adding a new reward for the last few days of the, the uh, she said the last six days of the, the campaign, a personal call from Santa Claus? You know, we thought about adding personal calls with that, uh, Santa Claus on there, but it just, uh, like when we were asking around, no one seemed to care, you know, because like, at the end of the day, it could be anyone calling, you know, it doesn't, right. like they don't see that it's Santa Claus. But it would you know? be, I would think that would be more from like their kid and if it was like before Christmas I could see that being huge. Right. It just it, we, we thought about it and the fact that like our Kickstarter went till the 19th mm. that, that might be something we try for like a, just a promotion once the movie's done. You know like you know you could win a phone call from Santa Claus or something like that but at, at the end of the day it just wasn't it didn't work it, it didn't work right. Uh, fair yeah. enough. And, um, and then as the other question, uh, no, I've been, I've been asking everyone, like some people, we've had donations anywhere from like $1 to 5000 So it's like we, um, I've been asking everyone to, to throw it in, and like even in like the worst ways possible where it's like, hey, let me pretend I've done you a favor, okay? Okay, we're, we got that. Now, hey, remember that time I did you a favor? Can you now put money into the movie? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, it's just one of those things where you got to kind of like play that game and uh, devote all that time to, you know, Facebook, Twitter, and, you know, your text messages, and uh, hitting on people you haven't talked to in a while, and just, you know, mm -hmm. not putting your hand out, but asking them to come on the uh, ground level and help you with this movie, and that's what Kickstarter is great with. Anyone who's ever even had the dream, never tried, or just thought about, or never even wanted to, but this one likes to help, it's just a great way of anyone getting into uh, I guess movie making in some regards by just helping out someone who wants to do this, you know. I understand, and, and you know, I I agree. I think I think the crowdfunding is is definitely a um, it's a whole new era for filmmakers to try to get stuff made. Now the question yeah. is, is you know. With adding to the glut of tons and tons of movies that are out there, you know, is it also going to add to the amount of movies that people have to go through to find the good ones? You know, not only just yeah. like the viewers, but festivals and distributors and all these other things. So, you know, who's going to play it safe? Would I rather watch, you know, a hundred thousand hours of video of stuff that I know sucks, or am I going to play it safe and just take the Black Brad Pitt, you know, flick? So, right. just to save myself the time. But, um... But yeah, that said, now you mentioned obviously you have Kickstarter that's been uh, you know a money maker for you literally. Uh, but yeah. you know you have things like social capital using Facebook, Twitter, and stuff like that. What have you found has been the best way to get um, and the most response you've got uh, to get the the word out on uh, on your flicks? You know, it's it's like we, you know obviously we started uh, the first day we got a decent amount. Um, I did some local television, and, you know, obviously, I mean, not that people watch television, but, like, to put that clip online, the show that you were on, like, you know, a cable show, not a cable, I'm sorry, like, you know, Channel 3 CBS sort of show, 
it shows that like you're almost uh, validated and like people will take you more seriously because they do oh well if TV believes they're real then I believe they're real you know that the, the day after I was on TV we had a decent amount of pop and like the updates too you know we uh, we put up um, a clip of Santa Russell uh, cursing uh, Walmart <laughs> off that was great that that helped us bring in some money and we showed Santa Frank um, showing off his tattoos just you know showing clips of the movie kind of an update right now um, we really have been trying just to update towards backers so that way they are more on the you know behind the curtains seeing on the insides sort of stuff and that's why we encourage people just just to donate a little bit so that way you can see kind of what we're doing more so than the general public awesome well I want to um, I want to thank you for coming on and I want to obviously tell people where they can find you we have the links for your Kickstarter campaign uh, over on the uh, the site here, obviously, um, I am Santa Claus Movie dot com, and uh, you can find you on Twitter, Twitter dot com slash Rock Hard Killer, Killa, with an a. Killa with an A. Hey, real quick, ask me that question: What I've been doing to get money, uh, people to raise money or donate? What have you been doing to get people to donate? Going on filmsnobbery dot com. <laughs> wow! Yes, you have. <laughs> you wait a minute, filmsnobbery dot com. You mean the voice for indie film? Sure. Where you can go and listen to uh, live guests every Thursday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with host it. with host Nick Baisley and Jerry Cavallaro? Yes. Holy shit. i got to do that right now. <laughs> you cursed, you ruined the ad. We can't play it on real radio. You got a point. That, you know what, though? Chances are this was never going to play on real radio anyway. Um, because you, you know, know, I work in radio. I can I can make things happen. I did not know that. Is that, is that what you kind of do on your uh, when you're not making movies? Yeah, I work for CBS Radio. I, I provide video content for radio. Video content for radio. <laughs> oh, it's the website, you know, blah, blah, blah. Right. That's good. I like that. That's awesome. Um, <laughs> well, I, again, that, that was really good. Um, <laughs> wow. That's like when I make the joke, like, I have a face for radio, you know, that I tell people all the time. Well, you do. Oh, definitely. Yeah, this should, no one should ever have to look at this. Um, <laughs> and I can't because the Skype thing doesn't work right. So you're lucky. Even when I have sex, I turn the lights off for her benefit. I wear a bag. Um, <laughs> and yet you still pay her. I do. But, you know, I find that's only fair, you know. <laughs> I'm um, just joking. No. It, you. Uh, no. They, it pays me in punches. Um, we I wanna, got off track. We, oh, you think? Uh, <laughs> but I want to thank you, Tom, for coming on. I, I, I really I appreciate it. I love you know. Talk, I love meeting you guys in First Glance Philly. I loved. Uh, I, I you still owe me a copy of Calendar Girl, you fuck. But um, I, yes, I, I do. Well, I just want to make sure when this thing happened first. <laughs> because... I see. I see. <laughs> no, I just haven't gotten around to it yet. I apologize. Ah, that's okay. And I want everyone to make sure they go and, um, you know, we've got two very deserving, um, uh, you know, uh, sets of guests that we had on tonight, both of them looking for dough. Uh, you know, make sure you go on over to, to um, IamSantaClausMovie.com, throw some money over at uh, our good buddy Tommy here, and um, oh, yeah. and whatever you got oh, left yeah. over, give it on over to Jason Tiffany Bar Talk while you're at it to uh, our previous guests. So. Uh, for their movie Tiny Dancers. So yeah, let's um, let's I'd say let's give it up. There's no fucking audience here. Let's let's yeah, there we go. Let's give it up for Tommy Avaloni, and uh, I want to thank I you for. I'll clap for myself. Why not? You know, sometimes you know it's the sound of one man clapping. You know. Um, I guess that's a saying. That's a saying. I don't know. I got nothing. It's late. <laughs> I'm I'm in a freezing fucking garage. Don't you have an announcement? I have a huge announcement. Well, huge to us anyway here at Film Snobbery. Maybe not as huge to all of you guys out there, but it's a big deal to us. And, uh, you know, while you're on, I might as well, I'll, I'll tell it now. Uh, cause Are you telling got, me the announcement? I'm going to tell you and the folks at home that are watching okay. the announcement. All right. Going Are you ready? That's uh, oh, no, yeah, I'm you're, sorry. I wasn't. Go okay. ahead, ask me again. All right, are you ready? Yes. Okay, grab your nuts. Here we go. All right, so, uh, folks, in uh, next week, uh, I'll be departing on a, a, on a quest, a journey, as it were, um, on behalf of uh, Film Snobbery and on behalf of, uh, we're partnering up with our good friends over at Film Threat. Haha, <laughs> see, there's a tie-in right there. Our good buddy, mutual friend, Mark Bell at Film Threat. We're gonna From be Calendar Girl? From ca Calendar Girl's Mark Bell, yes. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we're going to be partnering up, and uh, we're going to be uh, doing some uh, shared exclusive content, exclusive content, exclusive to Film Snobbery and exclusive to Film Threat, 
live interviews from both Sundance and Slamdance. How about them apples? There's some great apples. That's right, man. We are heading out to uh, Park City, Utah, and uh, we are going to go ahead and uh, we are going to film some motherfucking uh, footage. Park City, Utah. Oh, sorry. Uh, hello. Hi. Who is I, that? I tried to push play on the video. That was, so a, I handsome, see what's going on. That was a handsome devil I just heard. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, so we're, we're going to pack it up. We're going to go on over to, uh, I'm going to be heading on over to Park City. I'm going to be doing some great interviews. I've already scheduled an entire week's worth. I'll be there from the 19th to the 25th. Uh, and, um, you know, we'll be getting some great content as well as you guys will be getting uh, wonderful uh, announcements and updates uh, via Twitter and Facebook, obviously, on the, uh, on the trip, as well as every night. Make sure you come on over to FilmSnobberyLive.com. At least this is the way I assume we're doing it. Uh, FilmSnobberyLive.com because we'll be doing it live. Mark Bell and I will be getting live, nude, oily, and uh, we will be giving you guys exclusive live uh, Sundance updates. And slam dance updates, I should say. We're going to be at both. So um, I look forward to uh, meeting folks out there like Jason Tiffany Bartok, who... A little bit spilled the beans on that announcement, but that's okay. I told them before the show, so and actually a lot of you um, guys, yeah, I, knew. I you, knew, you knew, you knew. We all know, except the public. Um, my close friends and peoples that I talk to know. Um, so yes, we're going to be going to uh, we're going to be going there. We've got some great interviews. Uh, I'm, I'm already really jazzed up. Uh, everything's completely. My week is completely packed. Uh, I'm, you know, from at least I'd say ten to five every single day. I will be in an interview with somebody, and there's some great people out there that I'm looking forward to talking to. Uh, Peter Jackson's going to be there. Won't be talking to him. Uh, Chris Rock is going to be out there. Won't be talking to him. Um, Allison Brie is out. Going to be out there. Talk to her once. Won't be talking to her there either. Um, that's only because those interviews are like ridiculously hard to get as far as one-on-ones and they always want to shove you in like round tables and I refuse to do those because you know why film snobbery is better than a round table so is film threat for that matter um, you, you know I, I tried to interview Todd Bridges once and he slammed me up against the wall and tried to beat me up I had a similar exp- uh, experience once with Jeff Bridges oh yeah yes no not at all did that really happen yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I used to, uh, you know, working in, on a radio show, I uh, had to be like stuttering John kind of questions, and I just had some of these awful questions, and he was so pissed, he threw me up against the wall and tried to kick my ass, and I was hoping he'd punch me so I could at least make some money, <laughs> you know, but it didn't happen. That's awesome. That's awesome. And, and I just got the update right here on... Uh... On uh, Twitter from uh, Mark Bell, a film thre- the Film Threat account. Yep, it's true. We're working with Film Snobbery to do live interviews and fest coverage during Sundance Fest and Slam Dance. Um, it's it's going to be fun. I mean, um, not only am I going to be staying with the the folks over at uh, at uh, Film Threat, it'll be uh, so that ought to be uh, fun and interesting. Um, we're going to be um, we're going to be all over uh, Main Street and Park City and, and doing these interviews, and uh, I look forward to anyone who's going to be out there. I already know that some of the film snobbery people we've had on here, obviously Jason Tiffany, I know Sean Hackett's going to be out there, Lucas McNelly's going to be out there, Miles Maker, a bunch of uh, other people that we've met um, in the past are going to be out there. I look forward to connecting with everybody. It's going to be a, it's going to be a blast. Um, I've already been invited to a few parties, really excited for that. But it's really cool. I mean, I've never been to Sundance. So I'm or slam dance for that matter. I'm I'm really looking forward to having that that first experience, you know. And um, uh, I want to uh, I want to thank uh, Mark uh, Mark Bell from Film Thre- for Film Threat to uh, for for suggesting that we partner up for the coverage. And um, you know, and uh, it's great that I get to work with Mark finally because we've been I've been looking personally for s- some reason to work with Mark. Um, I respect Film Threat. They've been around forever, and uh, Mark's been doing this for many years. So I'm taking a lot of cues from him and. Um, I'm really looking forward to to uh, to seeing what that's all about. I mean, I've always I've gone on record in the past of being like, you know, Sundance, not really that indie, but you know, I've tried really hard to book interviews with people who really kind of embody what we do, and and uh, you know, um, and what Film Threat does as well, which is you know, highlighting, you know, the independent filmmaker. So we're we're really working hard on you know, kind of steering away from the celebrity side, making sure that we get some really good. Um, really good indie filmmaker interviews and hopefully we'll uh we'll get some more unscheduled ones kind of man on the street style as well so it's going to be fun i'm um i'm really looking forward to it it's going to be good do they still have trauma dance i i i've i don't think they've had i think they moved trauma dance over to new jersey now jerry is that correct they're in jersey now only aren't they unless yeah, someone like throws like a fan one two days now. yeah it's a two-day deal down in jersey 
There nice. Is a, that's where I live. Of Tribeca, which is kind of stupid because it's not like really close to it, so they yeah. don't have foot traffic of Park City. Yeah. Yeah, but and and I, it's too bad. I, I'm maybe I'll try to get to Troma Dance. I don't think I'm going to Tribeca, so maybe I'll try to go to Troma Dance this year. I love Lloyd, so it'd be good to go well, and hang if out. If you do, hit me up. He he te- he tweeted about uh, I am Santa Claus Movie dot com. Well, if anyone would like to talk to to hear a great interview with Lloyd Kaufman, it, we, we did it a couple years ago. But you can always go to uh, filmsnobbery dot com and click on our interview section, and you can go in and Ooh. get an interview. Great, we have a, like an hour long interview just with Lloyd, and Lloyd goes off the chain. This is back when like the Roman Polanski thing was going on, and he was just like, he's a child fucker, and blah blah. Like it was awesome. Um, <laughs> and if you want to see Lloyd's best performance ever in a movie. You can go to stucklightchuck.com and watch my movie for free, which has Lloyd playing a film professor and going nuts. I thought you were going to say when you can see his ass and officially re- uh, rejected. Oh, official rejection? Best yeah, performance. Really yes, second best performance. You see his ass. <laughs> oh, Lloyd. Well, you see his ass in the, um, can't you see his ass in the, uh, uh, what is it? Um, I have the freaking poster right here, Poultry Geist. The Poultry Geist uh, uh, extras on the DVD? I think you can, too. I don't know. He's showing his ass to everyone. You can just the type in, like, put an ass. You'll probably find something. I will say, this is my favorite. You guys can't see it. It's, it's way off uh, camera. But it is my favorite pic- poster I have up in the studio here. It's a p- poster of Poultry Geist signed by Lloyd. It says, to film snobbery, I owe it all to you. <laughs> That's uh, nice. Kisses and hugs, Lloyd Kaufman. Yeah, that was that's why we got that from his uh, from when we interviewed him. It was great. We went out to to Troma, you know, Troma Studios out there in Long Island City, and it was such a such a good time. He was really welcoming. He was really tired too. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're anyway back back on. Yeah, we're really looking forward to heading to, to Sundance. Slam Dance is going to be another good one. We actually have an interview scheduled with uh, Slam Dance founder Peter Baxter. Uh, which is or co-founder, um, current director, I think, executive director. Um, so we're going to be talking with him. That's going to be a blast. Um, and and hopefully, you know, we'll have to get a uh, uh, an interview with uh, Mervish as well. Mervish would be cool to talk to. Um, yeah, just so it's it's going to be an experience. I've gone on record as saying like I just I, I you know I wouldn't go to Sundance unless you know I had a business reason to go, and now I do, and I'm really looking forward to it. And I really hope that um, a lot of the things I've said about Sundance in the past <laughs> will be proven wrong, <laughs> uh, because you know I, I don't, I've never really looked at it as a festival for independent filmmakers per se. I've always looked at it as you know what happens to filmmakers when they meet the right person. You know, it's almost like independent filmmakers getting married, they go have the wedding at Sundance. Um, you know, and that's where the gift registry is. So I got married in Jamaica. And how was that? Hot. Hot? Was it, was it a bit on the warm side, or was it just that was what the honeymoon was? Hot. <laughs> no, no, it was good, it was good. Uh, it's just, you know, Jamaica. It's it's Jamaica. Yeah, I, I understand. It's honestly like all those all inclusive resorts. It's all the same thing. Yeah, you're it's absolutely not, right. It's not really what the like you know Mexico or Jamaica. It's just you know free booze in a pool. And that's and all. Free honestly, food. That's all you need. That's all I, I need. Think, I think I've said enough. <laughs> and, and I think we've all said enough. I think we're going to go ahead. We're going to wrap up this episode of Film Snobbery Live. I want to thank all of our guests. I want to thank Jason, Tiffany, Bartok. I want to thank uh, Tommy here, Tommy Avalone. And I want to make sure that, again, I direct everyone to IamSantaClausMovie.com. Make sure you uh, throw a couple shekels in his pot. Um, and uh, I, I, I hope we'll see you guys all in Park City next week. Uh, that reminds me, there will not be a official Film Snobbery Live next week, but we will probably get an update, uh, video update live from myself and uh, and Film Threats Mark Bell, as long as you know we've got some sort of a Wi-Fi connection and we can make it happen. So uh, we look forward to chatting with everyone. Um, we've got such a hugely packed set of episodes coming back. Um, We've got uh, Vivian Kerr coming on. We've got uh, we, wow, wow. We've got Chris Gore coming on. We've got uh, 
oh, it's a look. It's a packed slot, man. I I I, don't, I can't even tell you everyone we've got coming up. We are booked pretty much through March at this point, and going into April. So uh, it's going to be really good. Um, I want to say thank you to all of our guests that were on tonight. Alexia Anastasio, uh, uh, the, the director of Adventures in Plimtoons and the upcoming Ginger Girls movie. You, she, we just had her recently on the show. She is a fantastic human being. Um, I want to say thank you to Johnny Chronics. I want to thank uh, say thank you to Jerry, of course, for being uh, the moderator to end all moderators. Um, I want to thank Totally Rad Person, and I want to thank, uh, uh, let's just go ahead and see if there's anyone left in the chat room here. Who we got? Who we got? Um, I want to thank Tommy, again, because you're, you're listening. Thank and that, you. That's a filler. Um, <laughs> I want to thank, uh, oh, and Tiffany's actually in the chat room, too. We've already thanked you, so we'll thank you again. Um, I want to thank everyone again. We'll, uh, Scott Leesk. Scott Leesk, yes, sorry. I, just, I missed him in the thing. Good call. Good catch. That's why you thank me as moderator. It is. Uh, and Johnny Cronick seems to say, is this known in the industry as time filler? Yes, it is. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the end of Film Snobbery Live for this uh, episode for this week. We'll uh, see you when we get back from Sundance and Slam Dance. Good night. Have fun in the dance. Have fun at the dance. I just want to dance, dance, dance. <laughs>